Dallas, Texas, where at halftime, the St. Louis Cardinals lead the Dallas Cowboys 17 to nothing. They had completely dominated the play until the final moment when finally Dallas threatened to score, but a Whirly interception cut that off. And as is our usual halftime practice on a ABC NFL Monday Night Football, we're going to bring you highlights of some of the exciting, even dramatic games played yesterday. Films selected and provided by NFL Films. And here we go. Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota. The Vikings playing host to the Detroit Lions. Late in the first quarter, Fred Cox kicking off after having picked a field goal to tie the game at 3-3. Three and three. That's Bobby Williams, number 45, who just bobbled the ball. It may have helped him. He finds open space. He is running to daylight. Nobody's going to get Bobby on this run. It's 85 yards for a touchdown. And the Detroit Lions, who must win to stay alive, are leading by a score of 10 to 3. Now watch this. The Lions striking again. No, no. Paul Kosulke on the safety blitz. Minnesota playing tough defense as always. A big loss for Greg Landry. Now on the very next play, watch this. Herman Weaver punting from deep in his own territory. The punt is blocked by cornerback Ed Schrockman. Weaver recovers the ball, tries to move upfield. Indeed, he does to a degree, but not enough for the first down. And this sets up an eventual Minnesota touchdown by Clint Jones, which ties the game at 10-10. to -10. Now we're in the third quarter. And Gary Quazzo is hit by Bobby Williams, number 45. You recognize number 71. That's Alex Karras, recovers for the Lions on the Minnesota 8. Now, Landry drops back, looks for number 24, Mel Barr, hits him, and the Lions take the lead 17 to 10. The Lions added a field goal early in the fourth quarter. It was 20 to 10 Detroit, an upset in the making, but Quazzo strikes back. He hits Johnny Henderson, number 80. Henderson moves downfield, finally hit down on the Lions' five, a 40-yard gain. Four plays later, Clint Jones moves in for the score, and now it's Detroit 20 and Minnesota 17. Only 151 left to play. Quazzo must strike, and quickly, he drops back in the pocket. Looks for a receiver. Finds for the first time this year, Dale Lindsay. 49-yard gain to the Detroit five-yard line. This is the very next play. Again, it's Clint Jones. This is the third of those three touchdowns. Clint goes in for it, and the Vikings win it. 24 to 20, they have a three-game lead in the Central Division of the NFC with only five games left to play. Coliseum in Los Angeles. The New York Jets against the heavily favored Los Angeles Rams. Al Woodall, name it substitute. The pressure, enormous. The Rams jump to a 7 to nothing lead. Then the Jets on a third and two situation. Woodall hits Don Maynard, number 13. Maynard breaks downfield. Covers before he's down 45 yards to the Los Angeles 29-yard line. This is the very next play. And Woodall is beginning to look a little bit like Joe Namath. He's right in that pocket. He hits the rookie from Jackson State, Richard Castor, who's all alone. The Jets have tied it at 7-7. Seven to seven. The Jets have driven to the Rams 3. He hands off to George Knock, the youngster from Morgan State. Knock is in, and the Jets lead it 14 to 7. Now we're in the third quarter, following an exchange of field goals. Once again, Woodall, who hits for 10 of 17. This time, George Sauer. The beaten player is Kermit Alexander. Sauer streaks down the sideline. It's a 67 yard pass play to the Rams, 11. Very next play. Woodall is now calling plays like a pro. Lee White on the screen pass. The young man from Weber State storms in for the score. And incredibly, the Jets lead the Rams 24 to 10. Fourth quarter, after another Los Angeles field goal. Al Woodall throwing to number 83, George Sauer. It's another Jets touchdown. The final score becomes 31 to 20, a big upset. The Jets over the L.A. Rams.
Green Bay, Wisconsin, the Packers against the Chicago Bears. The story of this game, the unexpected return and heroics of the old master, number 15, Bart Starr. His club was trailing 19 to 13 with time running out. And Bart Starr went to work. One minute, 30 seconds left in the game. Bart drops back. The Packers are on their own 38, second and 10. He hits the tight end, John Hilton, number 86. And it's a 29-yard gain to the Bears, 33. This is the young Larry Krause from St. Norbert's College, where the Packers themselves train. In West Tepair, Wisconsin, 11 more yards to the 22. The clock spoke for itself. The seconds running out. Bart drifting back, finding no receiver, racing to the outside, in for the touchdown. And the old master brings Green Bay a 20-19 victory over the Chicago Bears. Yankee Stadium, New York City, the surprise team of professional football. The New York football Giants against the Redskins going into this game. The Giants had won five in a row. Middle of the second quarter, the Giants leading seven to six. And Ron Johnson, what a performer he's been this year. Rambles from the 17 to the three. He fumbles. Mike Bass scrambles for it, doesn't get it. Clifton McNeil does. And the Giants lead it 14 to six. Now we're early in the third quarter, and the Giants are leading at this point 14 to 12, but that's Charlie Haraway. The first time Washington has the ball from scrimmage. Watch Haraway go. Nobody's going to get him. It's a touchdown, and quickly Washington moves ahead 19 to 14. Suddenly it began to look like a romp for Washington the very next time they had the ball. Sonny Jurgen. The next with. Number 42, you better believe it, Charlie Taylor. The pass was from the Giants 28. Charlie's in for the touchdown, and it's 26 to 14, Washington. The Redskins seemed unstoppable. That's Jurgensen handing off to Haraway again. Another touchdown. All in the third quarter. It's 33 to 14, the Redskins. How amazingly things changed in the fourth quarter. The handoff from Fran Dawkins into Ron Johnson. 519 into the quarter. It's a touchdown, and the Giants have reduced the margin to 33 to 21. Now it's the Giants who are unstoppable. A pass to Tucker Fredrickson. Watch Tucker go. He looks like the rookie who came up from Auburn, 57 yards. He caught 10 passes this day for 165 yards, and the Giants are back in the game, trailing 33 to 28. Look at the clock. It speaks for itself. Now the Giants are marching again. The handoff goes to Ron Johnson. Johnson sweeps outside. The hands up race in the glee of victory. The Giants have pulled it out. 35 to 33. And remember, this giant team against the resurgent Eagles next week, Monday night on ABC.